It's the last stand. And here is your host, Brian Custer. That's right. It is the last stand. We bring you the biggest names in the sport. And joining me today is, and I've said it a number of times, is the best trainer in boxing. This guy has the unified welterweight champion of the world. He's got the undisputed 154 pound champion of the world and he's got one of the top lightweights in the world he's none other than derrick james dj happy to be here man Thank how you, you doing i'm good man i'm good appreciate it. life happy is good for you i want to talk about a couple of your fighters but man you certainly made some news around the world here lately <laughs> when anthony joshua shoots out on social media he's training in your gym how did right. that come about hey, i don't know it was just like somebody gave me a call and said he'll be in town it was just like the gym is open for somebody like that definitely without a doubt he can always come in that's kind of what it was do you want to train anthony joshua hey man i think anything is possible you know what i mean like you know um i think that he has a choice to do choose who he wants to and it's up to him I thought it was interesting. Robert Garcia just said this uh, the other day. Um, of course, he trained Anthony Joshua yeah, for, the last fight, yeah. for his last fight and, and obviously the loss to Usyk. Um, he said this. He said um, after Joshua told him that he was going to look for another trainer, quote, it's not about Derek James doing a better job. Virgil Hunter doing a better job. Me doing a better job than his previous trainer. No, it's about him talking about Joshua. Right getting out of his comfort zone and not being the boss and doing what he's told to do in a place where he's not comfortable. He's very talented. His power's insane, but he needs to believe in himself. He needs to be in an environment where he can't say, hey, I didn't get enough sleep. I don't feel like training or I don't feel like sparring anymore. What do you think about that? Yeah, I think that's his perspective. I think he, he knows him more intimately than I would ever know him because I just met him for a couple of days. But, I mean, that's his perspective. I mean, I think that hey, he has his choice. And if he feels like that's what's holding him back, who knows? You, you know the, the fight game really well. You know how veterans are. Right. When, when you're that per, far in your career, can you be fixed, so to speak? I think that anything can happen. It's, it's all about... The learning curve right now. I think that the older you are, the easier it is for you to understand what somebody wants you to do and be able to do it. I think that as a child, starting out younger, you learn it and you just do it automatically, right? But you don't generally understand it. But as an older individual, I believe that you understand it more and it's easier for you to say, okay, I'll do it and do it with more intent. Mm, interesting. Um, you, one of the fighters that you have in your stable at lightweight, Frank Martin. Right. How good is he? Frank Martin's an amazing fighter, man. I mean, I think that, and the thing about it with Frank is that people haven't seen the best version of him yet because he hasn't been pushed to have to use those, all the other tools, right? In a division that has Devin Haney, undisputed, right, right. Javante Davis, right, um, who has a secondary belt, you know, the Ryan Garcia, all these guys. Right. Is he ready for those? Is he on, at, at that level? I think that he's at that level. I think that it's just like I said that it's all about him facing this competition to keep, I mean, maybe one or two more fights, maybe them the next fight. I mean, I think that just him keep building and getting more depth and more depth and more depth. Because what happens in boxing is the thing about you can't go back. So if you miss something and something you didn't get, some education you didn't get, that's, that's the issue. So I think that the more fights, the more depth, and then when it comes to championship time, he's ready. Um, so you're also preparing as well because Jamel Charlo, has to defend his undisputed titles. Right, right, right. He's going to do it for the first time. Right, that's right, yeah. He's got Tim Zhu, January 28th, like Castaño, pressure fighter. Right, right. You know he likes it. How do you see that fight playing? Hey, man, I think I see Jamel Charlo being the best version of himself. I think that Jamel's going to show up as he always does, right? I think that knowing that the fight type of fighter Tim Zhu is, that makes Jamel even more deadly and more dangerous because he knows who he has to be to be successful. And when you look at Jamel, it's one thing, let's say, when you're a champion. Right, 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 right. Now you achieve that ultimate goal. Right. Undisputed champion. Right. How has that been? Has he changed as a fighter, do you think? I think that as a fighter, I think that the whole system, it's, it's the mentality, right? Because I think as the fighter, it doesn't really change you. It's just the way, I think that it's something that when you, the difference in the way you view yourself. So I think that you have to be able to maintain that 
This is just a belt. And like people, what people really generally don't understand is every trinket you win is yours. Mm. Has, nobody else has to even care about it, right? This is yours. You do it for you. It's for your legacy, for your life, for your family. So I think that in that, that's where he understands that, listen, this is me and this is mine. And I don't really care that anybody else acknowledges it because I did it myself. I, th I thought it was interesting at, at the press conference, Charlo was talking about not only the fight, but his future. And he said he had um, no intentions of moving up. Right. He said, uh, I'm not moving up to 160 until I wipe out 154, beat Zoo, and then Sebastian Fundora. What do you think about that? Hey, I think that you have to have goals, man. I think that to come this far, and if you think about this, to go from where he was to come this far and you keep knocking guys out, you keep being successful, I think at the same time, why would you question yourself? Do what you want to do. Or do what you believe you can do. Beat Tim Zoo and clean up Sebastian Fondor. I mean, that's what you want to do. Go do it. Mm. What, what were your thoughts? Because, you know, not only you getting Charlo prepared, getting Frank prepared, but obviously you were working with, with Errol all along. What were your thoughts when you got word, hey, Bud Crawford fight is off. Bud Crawford's going to fight Avanisi. I think it was very upsetting, but at the same time, I think that you have to just brush it off, man. Just keep it moving. I mean, you know, I think that you really, something you hope for, you want it, you don't get it, it's okay. I mean, it's, just, it's life. I mean, you know, these are two very successful young men. And listen, not getting what they want is a part of life. And sometimes I think that on this level, you generally always get what you want because everybody's around you telling you what you want and they like pacifying whatever you want. But I think at the same time, with this one, we didn't get it. Just keep it moving. Do you know a VPN is great for security and privacy? By hiding your IP address and encrypting your traffic, it secures your data from cyber attacks. But the problem is the protection, it's limited. NordVPN offers a brand new feature to the desktop apps, providing threat protection and taking your digital security to the next level. All you've got to do is enable it on your NordVPN app, and it protects you from malicious websites, malware, trackers, and intrusive ads, even if you're not connected to a VPN server. NordVPN allows you to watch sporting events which aren't airing in your region by switching your virtual location to a country which is showing the event. NordVPN also enables users to access Netflix libraries in other countries at no extra cost and saves money on subscriptions from other countries. It's also the fastest VPN in the world. No buffering, lagging, whilst streaming, and stops your ISP bandwidth throttling. With NordVPN, you're also able to purchase flights from different virtual locations to find cheaper flights. And NordVPN protects your data whilst traveling and using public Wi-Fi wherever you are in the world. NordVPN is only really the price of one cup of coffee a month. And one account can be used on up to six devices. Grab your exclusive NordVPN deal by going to nordvpn.com slash last stand Get a huge discount on your NordVPN plan plus four additional months for free. It's completely risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. Were, were you, and I'm talking about as, as, a, as a camp, disheartened when you heard Bud's re rationale where he had said, hey, look, I felt like, they kept putting the fight off, kept putting the fight off. I said I wanted to fight this year. They wanted to make the fight in 2023, and I'm going where I'm going to get paid, and I'm going to fight this year. Well, I think that I think that I think that one of the reasons, what the funniest thing about it is, to never fight on a, to be at this level, never really truly fight on a big pay per view fight card, right? Is to not really understand the business aspect of it, and I think that to build a fight is what makes the fight. And so what happened when you see him take this other fight and not build the fight and see you don't get, like, he gets what he wants, but the promoters as a whole don't get what they want, right? You don't put up millions of dollars to lose millions of dollars, right? So I think that's what, I think that's the part of life that he really doesn't truly understand as a 
as a fighter and not a businessman. As a businessman, you have to build. I mean, you, you've been part of these big shows and you see what we have to do. You travel out to Dallas, you travel here, you travel there. And it's like press conference, press conference, media, media, media. I mean, uh, all access or whatever. Everything to build a fight. If you see in, in, in his uneducated um, perspective of what he thought boxing is, he got the fight, but he was the only winner. Not the promoter, so they thought, you know what I mean? So I think that, and at the same time, I think that in going, if you were to go into a negotiation now with those numbers, you have no leg to stand on. As Fat Joe said, yesterday's price is not today's <laughs> price. Because what we assume, yesterday was an assumption, but today is a fact. And you can't come up in my face talk, talking to me about this or that when that's what you're doing. Mm. So I think that it was like um, something that was unnecessary for him to find out. Because you can, you can go through life believing you're something in particular. And that's cool because you believe it to who you are for yourself, right? But when somebody tells you, no, you're 15,000, whatever, whatever the numbers were, because I don't really know what they were. I just heard about it. My brother sent me some stuff. So we think about, that's who you are now. So you can't come and talk about, but I'm, no, you can't, no, 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 no. That's who you are. Mm -hmm. I'm a reference to who you are. Yeah. I mean, you can't hide behind the machine of ESPN and Bob Aram. That's, that's a machine, right? But they still really didn't promote pay-per-view fights. They had pay per fights, they didn't truly you know, promote, but I think that now he's by himself. Mm. I think it's something totally different. Do, do you think they'll they'll fight eventually? Do I don't know. Mm. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think that, I think that it may not happen because remember, the, his perspective of who he is is something totally different than those numbers say. And those things are not going to add up. And he shouldn't think any, any less of himself. But in reality, we have to understand what the market says. And the market says no. Hmm. Is it disappointing when, I'm talking about for the sport of boxing, that fight like that doesn't happen, especially if you look over and you say, man, Tank and, and Garcia gets made. God, this, this right. for fight fans, this would have been phenomenal. Right, right, right. Phenomenal for the sport. That's why, that's why you see like one fight can be made, one fight can be made. Like like uh, Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder was made, right? Or Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia was made. But this fight was not able to be made. Why is that? And three of the, in all three of those scenarios, there were one one individual, one company in like in kind, right? It was, you know, PBC. Hmm. So to say the PBC doesn't work with all these other people is asinine because you saw them work with other people. Hmm. Right, Golden Boy, they work, they work together. Right? And, there, and there's some people who said that PBC was the reason. There's a narrative out there that's like, that's the reason why this fight didn't get but made. But then at the same time, he worked with, uh, they promoted the fight with uh, Tyson Fury twice. They promoted the fight with Ryan Garcia and Tank Davis. So what is that about? So is is, is it really that situation? I mean, that's that's what you got. That's what you got to question. I mean, so I don't think it is. Hmm. Have you have found yourself not only as a trainer, but sometimes when you guys have a trainer, you guys got to be like psychologists. You got to be everything. Like, you knew Errol wanted this fight so bad. Do you have to right. say, hey, look, I still need you engaged. I still, you know, don't worry about no, it. We still I'm, got other things. That right. I mean, no, I, I, don't, I don't think I have to do I think that I, I, I do. I mean, everything I do is from a, it's like a psychological perspective mm -hmm. because you got to, know how to engage with the fighter, mm -hmm. right? And know how to interact with him in the sense where you don't rub anybody the wrong way and, and vice versa, they don't rub you the wrong way. But I think that that's just a relationship. But I think that, um, no, I mean, I don't have to inspire him. I don't okay. have to motivate him because he's, he's, I mean, now listen, these are young men and men really don't like to show their emotions, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't really know, you may not get the truth about a situation, you know, but at the same time, hey, man, you live life, you don't get what you want to keep it moving. Is there anybody else at 147 that excites you for Errol besides I, Bud Crawford? I think that everybody excites me because I'm telling you like this. I don't have to be excited other than when it's like, say, let's go get him. Mm -hmm. It's a contract. I mean, because I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't dislike any of them. I don't have any issues with any of them. I think there's so much about 
my guys. I mean, and me being what I said I was going to be from day one and to prepare them from day one. So really, it's like, um, it's all about my guys. Yeah. That's it. What, what did you think about the WBC mandating after everything fell apart with Crawford, mandating that arrow fight, Keith Thurman? And Thurman, by the way, came on the last stand and said, hey, look, uh, if he's the truth, I'm, I'm the truth seeker. I, mean, I have nothing to say about that. I mean, I think the, the thing I, I think the WBC is a that's what they're supposed to do. I mean, they 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 run the business the way they run it, and I think that uh, you know he he has you know uh, Keith Thurman he, he believes in he's a great fighter. I mean, think about it. He's been so successful for so long. The only thing he's played him was injuries. I mean, so I think that that's what's kind of held him back a little bit. He's beat Porter. He's beat you know Danny Garcia. We lost to Pacquiao, which lost to Ugas, which got beat by Errol Spence. So, you know, it's like, um, he's like, man, that fight, style make fights. He thinks he wants his opportunity, which, I mean, he's a man. Yeah. He's supposed to want his opportunity. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Brian Custer. I want to talk to you about our partner, Athletic Greens. You know, I started taking Athletic Greens because I wanted more energy. And I got to tell you, I absolutely love it. Athletic Greens doesn't taste super healthy. It's kind of mild, has that tropical taste, but I actually look forward to having it every single morning. So what is this stuff? Well, one scoop of delicious Athletic Greens, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. And it contains less than one gram of sugar, No GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything while still tasting good. Listen, it helps support better sleep quality for you, recovery, and it supports mental clarity and alertness is what I love about it. You know, AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits, and it's one thing you can do every single day to take care of yourself, and it's lifestyle friendly. So whether you're keto, uh, vegan, paleo, dairy-free, or gluten-free, Athletic Greens is for you. And it costs you less than $3 a day. So you're investing, really, in your health. And it's cheaper than that cold brew habit that you may have. So additionally, for every purchase, Athletic Greens is going to donate to organizations, help to get nutritious foods to kids all across the country who are in need, including No Kid Hungry, which is right here in the U.S. By the way, two years ago in 2020, Athletic Greens donated over 1.2 million to meals to kids. Now, it is the time to reclaim your health, folks. And all you got to do is arm your immune system with a convenient daily nutritional uh, supplement. And listen, Once we get into that cold flu season, this is something that you need because just one scoop of water every day with Athletic Greens, and there's no need for the million of different pills or supplements to look out for your health. All you're going to need is Athletic Greens. And to make it easy, Athletic Greens wants to give you free a one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. And all you got to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash last stand. Again, athleticgreens.com slash last stand. Athletic Greens. Take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. How active do you want, uh, let's say, Spence and Charlo in 2023? I think I want them as active as they can stay healthy, right? Or they, or they can stay incident free or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I think I want them to be able to be busy. I mean, if they, and it's really up to like, it's up to them. You know what I'm saying? And the fights. I mean, camps are so hard. Fights are even harder. I mean, so I think that it's just all about them getting prepared and them being, being able to be the best that they possibly can be. I want them to stay busy. How do you, um, in a day and age when it seems like fighters train? change trainers like underwear right, 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 right. how do you keep it your relationship not only you know obviously charlo came in later but with arrow for so long and it's there's so much respect there how, how do you how do you maintain that and stay fresh 
and, and continue to teach them new right, things. Right, right. I think that I think that it's always something different. It's always just a reminder them of what they're not doing. I mean, because you can think you're great, or you can know you're great, but there's always you you have to be able to see what they're not doing. Because I'm not a fan of theirs. So being a fan of theirs, saying they do everything right, and, but but being non like just a trainer, right, and being focused on them individually and their talent says, okay, he's not doing this right, not doing that right, and, and, and telling them what he's not doing, not tiptoeing around and listening, not doing this, put this up, pick that up. I mean, nonstop, all day, every day. So it's like, it's a respect, really, it's a respect, because if I let him go in there like that, he's going to look at me like, we had like three months. You could have, I mean, you could have you told me one time I was dropping in. So it's like, <laughs> you got to be able to just say, listen, this is what it is. He knows I'm going to tell him. Mm. They know I'm going to tell him. Yeah. Um I don't I think I got your perspective. Ugas, what do you think yeah. about his performance against Ugas? Well, I'm going to say, let me not talk about that. Let me talk about Ugas first. Ugas, like going into the fight, I knew that there's not many fighters like Dennis Ugas. And the reason why I say that is because a man who escaped six times from Cuba, right? And on the seventh time, he was able to escape. So how do you break his wheel? Because you can imagine what they did to him every time they caught him, right? You could, like, look, yeah. What could you imagine they did to him? In yeah. a communist country, they, they, I mean, I can't imagine torture, or whatever it is. And then on the seventh time he escaped, he's floating in the Gulf of, Mer uh, Gulf of Mexico for two days. He makes it to Mexico, and he's free. But think about this. How do you break him? I told Errol, I said, listen, there's one, you got to break him because he's not going to stop coming. And if you watch him in the fight, Errol broke his ribs, but whatever, all this broken stuff. And in the corner, he would ah, put ice on him, but he would go back out there and fight and didn't, didn't, didn't bat an eye, right? So it's like he embraced the pain. Mm. So it's like he embraced everything else because who he was was greater than what, what you saw. You know what I mean? So it's like and Errol really basically, and this is the thing about it, he, he stopped him, but I don't think he still broke him. Mm. <laughs> because that's just who that guy, I mean, you know, you have to see after how he is after that fight, right? But it's like, um, cause that guy has more than this, he's fighting for more than his experiences, right? His yeah. experiences says that he's something greater than what, what you really see. So, and I knew his story and knowing the story says, Hey man, it's not it's not an average guy. Yeah, but, and, and I thought it was interesting because we caught the audio of you even after the the win. You were guys right. in the room. You kept right. saying, "You gotta say focus." Right, right, right. You gotta right. say focus. Right. Talk, talk to me about what you were talking about there. Well, I was just saying like you, you, he, he lost a little focus when he lost the mouthpiece, and I just said, "Listen, man, it's it's all about focus. You cannot lose your focus because what happens is if you have a target, you have something you're based on, some success you want, right? And you keep focused on this, right? There's all this chitter chat everywhere. It's, it's okay to walk a couple steps off the beaded path, but to walk a mile away and lose focus, I'm like, no, you may take a couple steps off, get back to the target. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, listen, stay back. Okay, if you lost a little focus, refocus and keep walking forward to your target to your goal. I will, I will, and I know you weren't gonna give me your secrets, but can you give us some part of, what's the secret sauce? What's the secret sauce? Brother, you've got a guy no. who's a belt away from right, being the right. undisputed champ right. at 147, an undisputed champ at 154. Right, right, right. You got a, a lightweight that everyone thinks like, wow. Right, right, right. I, obviously, Anthony Joshua is coming to your gym for a reason. What, what's Man, the secret you know, sauce have, of Derek well, James? Well, well, the secret sauce is not, I mean, Joshua's the only came because we have better weather here than we, right now what they have in the UK, <laughs> I think. But no, I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't necessarily think it's the secret sauce. I just think it's more about, man, the commitment. I never get caught up in the hoopla. I mean, I was a fighter. I fought on a pretty decent level. I mean, I'm not living through the fighters. I mean, I'm, um, I stay to myself. I want to. And I think that, you know, um, I know that you have to keep reinventing yourself. You have to keep growing. You have to keep expanding. You can't be locked into something in particular because things may change. I mean, so it's like there's no secret sauce. It's just like determination, man, motivation. And... Um, a man who really wants to be what my young guys asked me to be when they asked me to train them. Wow, love that.
Hey, what's up? You know, it is the most wonderful time of the year. It can also be the most hectic time of the year. And if you're anything like me, you put shopping off until the very last minute. And if you have an online store, you know the feeling of getting hit with a ton of orders at once. And when you're buried in orders and emails from stressed customers, you'll wish that you had ShipStation. That's right. ShipStation turns holiday ship storms into smooth sailing so you can keep your customers happy and still find time to enjoy that holiday eggnog. And as we all know, the holidays can be very stressful, but using ShipStation isn't. I like to avoid extra holiday stress by getting on top of our shipping process before the season gets crazy. And with ShipStation, we don't have to feel overwhelmed and we can feel reassured that our customers are receiving their orders on time. I agree. It's way better than using the default shipping option for online stores. Those always take time to deal with unnecessary hassles. With ShipStation, you're able to manage every order from one single dashboard, automate routine shipping tasks, print shipping labels, and easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment. And with enterprise solutions that make warehouse optimization easy, ShipStation scales when you do, so there are no limitations on your growth opportunities. ShipStation has a free trial and a quick setup. And if you've been on the fence about trying it, there's no better time than trying it out right now. And one of the best parts is ShipStation works with all your favorite places to sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Listen, no one wants to think too hard during the holidays. ShipStation, it's a no-brainer. You'll save money, time, and stress during the holiday rush. And when you sign up using our promo code, you'll even get two months to try it for free. This holiday season, give yourself that stress-free holiday shipping. Use the promo code LASTSTAND at ShipStation.com. Sign up for your free 60-day trial. Again, ShipStation dot com promo code last stand all right Derek for everybody who watches right. this podcast they submit questions we've got a number of them right. for you we'll okay. get right yes. to them uh Chuck asks uh do you have any interest in training Anthony Joshua you know what I would love to you know I think he's a great fighter and I would love to be able to kind of get involved with him and you know uh, you know and um I would love that okay. if it's possible I mean I don't know but if it's possible you know you yeah. never know um, another one from Twitter asks, what adjustments do you see Anthony Joshua needs to make to perform at an even higher level again? Mm, that I won't comment about. I think that, I think that, that I won't comment about. Um, Darren asks, are there any other fights that excite you tactically as a trainer at 147, 147 other than Bud? I think that the other like uh, other fighters. I mean, other good fighters. Um, um, Jerron Ennis is a good fighter. I think that um, Stanley Onis is a good fighter. I mean, I think that um, I mean, think Virgil Ortiz is a good fighter. So there's a lot of good fighters in the, in the weight division, man. I think that it's just all about um, opportunity. I mean, it's like like you say, listen, he it's up to him. It's yeah. up to you know, it's up to the business. It's up to that. But I mean, yeah. I like all of them. Shakur Tatum asks, do you still believe you have the best stable in boxing? <laughs> you know what? That might be true. <laughs> <laughs> but I think at the same time, I think that uh, I don't think about it because mm. it's like it's not it's not even if, if I think about this, if I'm caught up on how great I am as a trainer, if I'm caught up on having the best stable, I just focus on getting my guys prepared for these fights in particular. And think about this, I don't have to get him prepared to be the best. I just have to get him prepared to be better than the fighter he's fighting, right? And and I want you to keep getting him better and better and better, and maybe he'll become the best, mm -hmm. right? The best version of himself is really what it is. Omar asks, how do you feel about your accomplishments so far in boxing as a coach? I think it's cool, even though I don't really think about it. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not like, you know, you know who I am? I mean, I'm not that guy because I think that you, I'm the guy who walks in the room and 
is the same person that I am when I walk in a room with success, that if something happens, I can walk into the same room and say, I'm gonna get the same t situation because I never acted a particular way before. So I was like, I don't really, I mean, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's cool, I'm happy. I mean, it's something that I could have never imagined doing. And my success in boxing is how I live my life. And I mean, to the fact that if I can do something this great, just a regular kid from the projects can do something like this, then I can do anything else in life. So that's what I believe, so yeah. Renee asked, as a coach, what are the things that you see that fighters don't while training them during an actual fight? I mean, it's just, I, you, you can see a lot of things. I think that I don't, if they don't see it, but they understand it when I explain it to them. Mm. And so it's like, because everybody has something they need to work on. I think nobody's that great to where they don't, they don't have to work on anything. And I think that regardless of how good the fighter is, Nobody's that great to where they don't have to work on anything. I think that, but they have to be humble enough and I have to be able to communicate with them in a way that they don't, they don't get offended by me saying something, right? So it's like, and I tell them, listen, this is what it is, this is, and, this is what, and I explain to them. So it's like, I can see, because I'm not in it, you're in it. I'm outside looking at it. So that's the difference, right? And they always take my advice because they understand that this is what's gonna help, because if they don't do it, then I'm gonna hit them. <laughs> <laughs> I left that part out. Yeah. If, they, if they don't do it, I'm gonna hit them. And I'm gonna show them. This is why I said that. Yeah. So it's like, I'm gonna show them, because like sometimes, you might have to show them. Right, right, right. That's why I worked out, that's why yes, I said, yeah. every now and then you might have to yeah. you know, hit them. Put yeah. some hands on oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Derek James, we've come to the last segment of the right. show. We call it the last day, and I'm gonna ask you a series of questions. Just give right. me the first thing that comes to your mind. Right. We always ask this to fighters. Let me ask this to you. Give me your top five pound for pound trainers list. Pound for pound top five okay. trainers list. Nacho Berstein, I can say, you say of all times? Whatever, you feel like right Na now? Nacho Berstein, I think, uh, I like Virgil Hunter. Mm -hmm. I like Emmanuel Stewart. I like uh, Georgie Benton. Mm -hmm. And God, um, I like somebody nobody knows. Who's that? Paul Reyes. They don't Paul remember Reyes. him. Let me tell you, Paul Reyes. Paul Reyes is a guy who had Donald Curry, he had oh, Stevie Cruz, he had Gene Hatcher, and he had uh, what's the other kid name? Um, God, he had like four champs at one time. Wow. Rock, they had Rock and Robin. Uh, what was it? Uh, God, I get, but it was like four champs at one time in Fort Worth, Texas. Wow. It was a difference. So people talk about what they were doing at Crunk, but they were doing it better in Fort Worth because they had Donald Curry, Curry. right? They had Gene Hatcher. They had uh, Stevie Cruz. They had, God, I can't think of the other kid's name. Because it wasn't Robin, Brock and Robin Blake. It was, I forget his name, but you know, um, you know what I loved about Donald yeah, Curry? Right. What is that? That right hand and his shag. I thought that yeah, yeah. was the coolest cat ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so listen, I, I had to take it to yeah, Paul Reyes uh, my last one, yeah. What did you think about Bud Crawford's performance against Avenesian? I didn't see it. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I don't watch a lot of boxing. Tank versus Ryan, who wins that fight? I think uh, Tank Davis does. Mm -hmm. uh, last but not least, most talented fighter you've ever trained. I mean, I've been the best, most talented. No comment. <laughs> no comment. I know better than that. Put me in the fox, so I hear about that. Man, you said, you said, hey, you know why I train? Do you know? <laughs> okay. Right, that's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. Because you know Jamel Charlo would call you. I didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> Jamel Charlo would call you. First of all, phone. I didn't say Jamel Charlo. <laughs> I didn't say it. I'm name. saying Jamel Charlo will call I'm just saying, phone. no, I have no comment. You know, keep uh, that to himself. Lastly, when you tell the people, pound for pound, best broadcasting fighter you've ever seen in the ring with a championship fighter. Broadcasting fighter? Yeah, broadcasting fighter. I'm talking about a broadcaster who's also a fighter who you've ever seen in the ring with a championship level fighter and you handled himself. It took some Ryan blood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Even though y'all tried to laugh at me. Yeah. I know, no, I did not try to laugh. Yeah. I, I told my man, don't do that. I kept saying, 
<laughs> and you know, I was doing hey, amen. Okay, don't do that. Hey, I kept trying to kind of like, yeah. don't hit him so hard. Don't you? <laughs> I remember I kept saying, hey, man, you got to hold the mic tomorrow. <laughs> yes. You hit him in the arm. You got yes. the football game coming up. So yes. now, really, I'm thinking you about were, your you career. You weren't looking out for me. You like, did. Man, stop. I was like, yeah. oh, my God. Yeah, you did. Yeah. You did. You yeah. said, you want to go another? Okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. But I was like, hey. Uh, a tough guy. I love it. I love it. That's what we do here on the last day. We bring you the biggest names in the sport yeah. and best trainer in boxing. Is this guy right here. Thank you. Appreciate it. Derek James. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again next week. Thank you.